All right, so as I'm sure everyone now knows, the Dermlite DL5 has been released and is available for purchase. And really with anything that's new, whether it be dermatoscopes or cars or whatever, the question is always what's different? What's new and different about it? What does it offer that others don't? And while there are several features that are unique to the DL5, the most unique is that of variable polarization. Now, I think everyone watching this is already aware of how polarization works, but just to kind of get us all on the same page. Now, typically we think of having two settings with our dermatoscopes. We've got the one which allows us to see surface features, and we often refer to that as the non-polarized setting. And then we've got the other, which we think of as being polarized light, which allows us to break through the glare that is coming off of the stratum corneum. Now, the reality is that with many of the modern dermatoscopes, it's actually, it's all polarized lighting that we're saying. It, it's linear polarization for surface evaluation and cross polarization for deeper examination. And as I'm sure, again, most of you all know, most of the time that we spend when we're doing non-contact dermoscopy, we're spending it in the cross polarization and the deeper examination setting, because that's where most of the features that we need to see, that's where most of them are, deeper and beyond the stratum corneum. And so what Dermlight has done with the DL5 is that they've taken the two options of linear polarization and cross polarization, and rather than giving us the either or, we now have the ability to scroll through the spectrum of polarization levels, and in doing so, we can accentuate structures and elements within the skin at very, very specific depths. And so just to emphasize the importance of the role of polarization in dermoscopy, I just want to bring up two relatively recent articles. One is this article which talks about the presence or disruption of skin markings as it relates to skin cancer. And this article, I like it because it reminds us that at each level, there's often something that we can learn that we can incorporate into our assessment of any given lesion. I'll put a link below for those of you who are curious. And the second the second one is honestly, in my opinion, a bit more important. And the title of the article pretty much says it all. Not all polarized light dermatoscopes may display diagnostically critical polarizing specific features. The doctor who put together these side-by-side -side comparisons did a really good job with, I think, six different dermatoscopes, Dr. Chin Weibru. And to me, it just it's incredibly helpful to see that. And tying it into the DL5, it reminds us that degree of polarization in one dermatoscope is not the same as degree of polarization in another. And in this case, talking about a significant finding associated with melanoma, the shiny white lines, if the degree of polarization or lack of polarization is obscuring our view of really important features like the shiny white lines, that can have a significant outcome for the patient. All right, so let's come back to the DL5. So on one end, we have polarization, which accentuates the surface features, which in the case of DL5, rather than saying linear polarization, the terminology that they have preferred to use is parallel polarization. And so parallel polarization is the setting which allows us to see very top surface features such as skin markings. And then as we move down the spectrum, the deepest level of cross polarization is what allows us to see past the stratum corneum and see those colors and structures and elements. And so we know that with the DL5, the degree of polarization can be adjusted as we scroll through the spectrum. And in doing so, very, very specific depths and any structures, elements, colors within those depths are going to be accentuated. Now, I got to thinking about the concept itself because part of me, and I'm sure some of you watching this are thinking, well, you know, thousands of a millimeter difference between any different level, how much difference can it really make? Does the ability to scroll through that spectrum, does it really make a difference? And although it's not an apples to apples, Apple's comparison, it really got me thinking about something that we're all familiar with, which is with KOHs. So when we do a KOH, it's all prepped and we start viewing, what do we do? We first focus the microscope to take us to that median plane, which brings the majority of what is on the slide into focus. But then what do we do? We scroll through the planes. And so I created this video here just to show us what we all already know, which is how as we move from the very, very top 
plane of focus. And then very, very carefully, we scroll through the spectrum within which the hyphae are found. And by scrolling through the planes of depth, we're then able to put together a complete picture of these elements that we're seeing. And so again, although it's not apples to apples, the concept of being able to scroll through the planes with the DL5, that lighting is going to be able to assist us in cutting glare and accentuating different elements, colors, structures, etc. within those very, very, very specific planes. And so I look forward to these coming months, like in some of the discussion groups online and even customers writing in. I look forward to seeing video. In the case of DL5, Ideally, it would be a recorded video of the DL5 in action as it scrolls through so we can all see in, you know, in real life what kind of difference it can make. Hopefully, it helps clear up at least the concept of how variable polarization will work in dermoscopy and in the DL5. Thanks.